Throughout history, we've lost countless celebrities on the verge of an impressive career. In this week's video, I'm counting down my picks for the top 10 most promising careers that were cut short. This list will focus on actors, celebrities and singers from the 80s, 70s and earlier. I will, however, not include heavyweights like Elvis Presley and Freddie Mercury. Follow the yellow brick room. Eddie Cochran was an American rock and roll musician whose songs resonated with teenage frustration and desire during the mid-1950s and early 1960s, making him one of the first teen idols in recorded history. He experimented with multi-track recording, distortion techniques and overdubbing, even on his earlier singles, making his music experimental and fundamental in the evolution of music. We have to watch the television. Just like I promised you, here he is back again, Eddie Cochran, one of America's top rock and rollers. Eddie? His public image as a sharply dressed, attractive young man further epitomized him as one of the standout acts of his era. Tragically, Cochran's life was cut short when he died at the age of 21 in a road accident during his British tour with Gene Vincent on April the 17th, 1960. Jim Morrison was the enigmatic frontman of the psychedelic rock group The Doors, embodying the essence of rebellion and artistic enthusiasm during the late 1960s. Morrison was more than just a rock star. He was a shaman, provocateur, and most of all, a wordsmith. His lyrics and the band's music seemingly cast spells that resonated with the disenchanted youth, looking for an outlet for their frustrations during the changing times. And it's easy to see why Rolling Stone hailed him as one of the greatest rock singers of all time. In a Paris apartment at the tender age of 27, Jim Morrison left this world, leaving behind a legacy that transcends time. His death remains shrouded in mystery with conflicting witness reports and no official autopsy. The melodic dreamweaver who danced on the edge of stardom, Andy Gibb, was the youngest of the Gibb brothers, emerging from the shadows of his older brothers, the legendary Bee Gees, like a comet streaking across the night sky. He had all the hallmarks of becoming a pop teen sensation. Sun-kissed hair, smoldering eyes and a voice that could melt hearts and ignite dance floors. He was a rebel with a velvet touch. His charisma was magnetic, drawing fans into a world where love was both tender and electric. And when he co-hosted the glitzy American TV show Solid Gold, he became the golden boy of the airwaves. But behind the spotlight, Andy was battling demons of addiction that whispered in his ear and depression that darkened his soul. The same heart that sang love songs also harbored pain that the world was unaware of. And then on March 10th, 1988, just five days after his 30th birthday, the music stopped. Did you know I have a second channel? That's right, my second channel consists of original content, as well as me exploring the area that I live in, as well as some dad jokes. Ever wondered why golfers carry two pairs of pants? It's in case they get a hole in one. So what are you waiting for? Go on, check out my second channel. A link to that channel is in the description of this video. A true rebel with the script, a working class poet of the silver screen, John Garfield didn't just wear his heart on his sleeves, he flung all of his personality into the spotlight, bruised and unapologetic when he played a role. Frankly, the first is money, but the uh, second reason is my brother. If you don't know who he was, just imagine him. Dark eyes, five o'clock shadow, and a voice that could ignite a cigarette from across the room. He could interpret a script better than most of his co-stars, and he could transform into anyone. The boxer at the gym, the crooner on the radio, the gang leader with a secret. And then the HUAC came, with a witch hunt for the alleged communists in 1947. Garfield stood before the committee, refusing to betray his colleagues. The price? His career, of course. Forever severed and he was blacklisted by the industry. He suffered from long-term heart problems, which, allegedly aggravated by the stress of his blacklisting, led to his death at the age of 39 on May 21st, 1952. I'm an attorney. Legally, I'm in a fiduciary relationship with your husband. That'll be the day when I die. Slick back hair, horn rimmed glasses, and a grin that could light up a jukebox. Buddy Ali songs were three minute symphonies. Compact, explosive, and filled with teenage longing. He blended country twang with rockabilly swagger, creating a sound that made hips sway and hearts ache. His hits like That'll Be the Day and Peggy Sue became.
try that again. He said it's like, that'll be the day and Peggy Sue became anthems for the younger generation yearning to break free. Buddy Ali was a pioneer of rock and roll music with the world at his feet and fans screaming to be in his arms. But good things never last. On February the 3rd, 1959, three of the most promising American rock and roll musicians, Buddy Holly, Richie Valens and the Big Bopper, were all killed in a plane crash near Clear Lake, Iowa, together with the pilot Roger Peterson. A raw force of nature and a kaleidoscope of martial artistry, Bruce Lee was a dragon that blazed across the silver screen. Talented, handsome and with a bright future ahead of him, Bruce's journey began in the neon lit streets of Hong Kong, where he learned the swift elegance of Wing Chun. His movies were thunderstorms of action, the screens crackling with his energy, nunchucks, high kicks and that signature war cry that echoed through generations. July the 20th, 1973 started out like any other day on set, but it would end in tragedy. A headache, a nap and then the end of an era. A government inquest concluded that the martial arts movie icon died from an aspirin allergy, but there are many insiders and fans who believe foul play was involved. You've lost me. <laughs> <laughs> I have. <laughs> So what I'm saying, actually, you see, I mean, it's a combination of both. I mean, here it is the natural instinct, and here is control. Intensely beautiful, Sal Maneo was a rebel without a cause, a youthful firebrand, and a tragic star whose life unfolded like a noir film. Intense, unpredictable, and cut short by fate's cruel hand. Sal's breakthrough came in Rebel Without a Cause in 1955 when he portrayed John Plato Crawford, a sensitive teenage yearning for connection. Next batch, they're gonna start giving him numbers. His chemistry with James Dean crackled like electricity, and their scenes together are still etched in cinematic memory for being a blatantly obvious display of his own sexuality. He gracefully danced through genres, crime dramas, epic, and even sci-fi. In Exodus of 1960, he won a Golden Globe and earned a second Academy Award nomination. His face graced posters, and fans whispered his name in crowded theaters. Yet, beneath the spotlight, Sal wrestled with his own identity, before eventually accepting and announcing his bisexuality. February the 12th, 1976, will forever be a date etched in sorrow when he was stabbed to death in an alley. The world lost a talent that burned too brightly, leaving behind memories of jukebox melodies, leather jackets and a legacy that defied conformity. But once I get drafted, all I've got left is memories. You're tearing me apart! James Dean refused to live life with one hand tied behind his back, a subtle end to his own sexuality according to a lot of people. His roles typified teenage disillusionment and social estrangement of the time and he quickly became a symbol of confused, restless and idealistic youth of the 1950s, particularly thanks to his role in the iconic movie Rebel Without a Cause alongside Sal Maneo. The James Dean mystique continues to flourish into the 21st century with people still fascinated by the actor who refused to fit the mold of what Hollywood was back in 1950s. On September 30th, 1955, Dean died in a motor accident at the age of 24. He only had 8 movies to his name when he left this world, but his impact was seismic. His legacy endures, a symbol of youth, rebellion and the eternal question, what if? Rudolf Valentino was a sex symbol of the 1920s, known as the Latin lover, the great lover or simply Valentino. He danced the tango with destiny in every role that he took, his eyes promising both passion and peril on screen, making audiences fluster and fall in love. He was one of the first public figures to face scrutiny and speculation about his sexuality. Sure, there are people that said he was gay, but there are also people that said that it's just hogwash and that he was straight. I did a video about this in the past. If you want to check out that video, I will put a link to that video in the description of this video. Valentino died on August 23rd, 1926 at the age of 31 from a medical condition which would later become known as Valentino syndrome, a pain presenting in the right lower quadrant of the abdomen caused by a duodenal ulcer. An estimated 100,000 people lined the streets of Manhattan to pay their respects at his funeral, and bereaved fans even took their own lives according to some sources. Many of his movies are considered to be lost films, but his legacy remains as a true testament of his talent. If there ever was a poster boy for things that could have been, then John Eric Hexham would be it. Tall, handsome and a body that seemed to have been sculpted by the gods themselves, he was on track to becoming the next leading man in Hollywood. Even if it was just for a brief moment in history, there was a time when his name was on the lips of everyone, from fans to casting directors. 
Even to this day, many people still grapple to understand how someone with such a promising future got the short end of the stick. A cosmic chain of events that started with a delay in shooting, followed by him toying around with a prop gun to kill time. He died by an accidental self-inflicted blank cartridge gunshot to the head on the set of the TV series Cover Up. Do you think your looks will ever be a detriment to your career? It's a detriment now in, in, in some ways. Thank you for watching this video. Do you agree with this list? Is there anybody that I left off this list that you would like to see me feature? Let me know in the comments. For a similar video to this one, click on this link. Or if you want to check out something else that is entertaining but a little bit different, click on this link over here.